there are so many different types of welding processes and applications from aerospace stuff to roller coasters to bulldozers to artwork and you got everything in between so what I brought today because I know we're talking about some of the how to some of the machines you could use and how you could kind of start doing some of this stuff in your own neighborhoods and communities um, uh, really simple MIG machines this is not a simple MIG welding machine um, this is kind of a commercial unit but there are very and affordable affordables relative but there are very affordable machines on the market that you can pick up for a few hundred dollars and be tacking sculpture type type, type stuff together at your house uh, or you're in your basement or at your church parking lot or whatever and the the most dangerous thing about welding is not the welding itself it's the addictiveness of it once you start building stuff <laughs> once you start building stuff you just want to keep building stuff if it's in you being a builder and being a creator and, and getting kind of in touch with that side you just want to keep doing it and so like I I sat in the shop last week and made some of these pieces and just it's just kind of a happy space for me you know to put that head down and get focused and you know uh, think about some of the things that drive you so I'll pass a few things around this one, I, I was gonna finish with some gun parts today. And all this stuff's heavy because steel's heavy. So just handle it with two hands and don't drop it on your feet. But uh, one of the, I've always been really in love with the African-American spiritual down by the river, riverside. And you know, ain't gonna study war no more. And just this laying down of the anger and the burden that we all carry and saying, we're gonna move forth with peacefulness, right? And so that song's just always hit me. And so I love, I love weld writing is one of the, types of things I like to do. I like to kind of engrave, I'll engrave, a, this is a big old piece of road plate that the city had discarded and I kind of captured some of that and made some artwork out of it and I just like to engrave and then weld write, you know, a phrase that kind of inspires me if you will. So I'm gonna pass a couple things around. Uh, it's pretty heavy, so. Uh, I'll pass this one around too. This is, uh, this is a piece of that old road plate too and used a carbon art gouger to make this little plow trail through the piece and then drew up and CNC cut this sword and plowshare and everything and if you notice there's work left to be done at the end of the cross and that's uh, something that kind of hits me too and then you can see these two pieces this one's really 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 heavy but uh, you know coming from the Sermon on the Mount <coughs> And then this is something that I made that I'm either going to leave with Shane or Mike or somebody, but I can make some more, you know, which is just some uh, bunch of scrap stuff I had laying around that uh, Mike sent me the, the, j scrap. the JPEG. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, Mike sent me the JPEG, and uh, we just kind of exploded it into a DXF and burned it out on the plasma table. So uh, I can make more of those. But that being said, welding is one of those wide crafts that if you're really interested in it, finding somebody locally to help you get started is, it's, it's daunting. The, the amount of things you have to learn, the amount of tools you need to acquire or will want to acquire, the more you know. Uh, and then uh, just the know-how is, it's 10,000 hours deep. You know, welding is a 10,000 hour craft. It is something that took me years and years and years and I'm still learning. So get with somebody that knows something, find a mentor, find somebody that's dabbled a little bit, watch some YouTube videos and you can throw all kinds of stuff together. So I burned out a bunch of these. Um, Shane uh, dropped off uh, a double barreled shotgun two or three years ago at the shop and turned it into a piece for a guy I think that lived in Milwaukee and that gun had killed the man's brother and he wrapped the gun up in a burlap sack and put it in his basement for 30 years or something and then they, they pulled it back out I guess after hearing about raw tools and wanted to do something with it so we got to take that gun that you know caused such you know chaos to that family and uh, we planted some roses in it like uh, steel roses you know and just kind of turned it into a um, something more commemorative of, of life out of something that was destructive you know so um, Let's see what else we got here. I, I, what I hope to do, and we just can't do it in the larger crowds, we kind of have to set up, but I hope to get you guys in here. And I burn out and made up a bunch of these little swords into plowshares. And I'd, anybody that wanted to weld that had safe enough clothes on, I'm kind of set up to do that. So um, what I also want to do is talk to you about the different processes. This is most likely the kind of welding you would do. And this is, this, these are good triggers right here. Uh, this is MIG welding and it just automatically feeds the wire through with a shielding gas which is argon and CO2 and so you have a constant kind of semi-automatic feeding process of your filler metal and you know the, the basics of metal is 
you are making two pieces of metal one, right? You're molecularly joining them. You're melting both pieces. You're adding this filler and the three pieces become one single piece. So that's the whole, that's really everything welding is, is joining metal metals molecularly kind of on the atomic level. So this is just a piece of filler wire. And I've also got, here's one of the older processes that I still really enjoy. And on a day like today, if we had been over in the, the university parking lot, this is about the only thing that would have worked because you can't weld in the wind unless you're using an electrode like this that has a flux coating wrapped around it that when burned, it creates a small atmosphere around the weld because the really neat thing is that the, the atmosphere we breathe, you know, is 19% oxygen and then it has a host of other things that are harmful to liquid metal. It, it'll get, uh, you know, hydrogen and those kinds of things will attack a piece of liquid uh, metal, which is what you're making. So this, this flux actually burns. And when this wire actually burns and it has this shielding gas that I've got hooked up, it creates this perfect little atmosphere around a molten puddle and it travels with, with that puddle to protect it from the atmosphere we breathe. So it's kind of a neat thing to pass around. That's a, there's about a hundred years of history and development in, in that rod right there. There's also, another, there's also another process called TIG welding, which uses a piece of tungsten. Tungsten has a really high melting temperature, like over 6,000 degrees. So it's kind of one of the hottest metals that you can use to weld with and it just melts the steel and then you manually add the filler metal as you go along um, so that's tungsten inert gas welding tig welding so uh, we get to kind of explore with all of those things with the, the work we do on the day-to-day -day, so